Good morning and welcome to Spiritual Glam. On today's show, we will be on Proverbs 31. It's exciting to express what God has for us today. This is specifically towards women in general. We've spoken about it in episodes before about that God comes to get his bride. His bride is the church, so that does include males. But if you if you can imagine with me for a second, what kind of dress, what kind of bride's dress would you like to wear? The bride's dress, as we discussed before, would have to be according to our to the way we look, according to our size, according to our height. It would be detailed specifically for us. And God has that specifically for us. Detailed lives specifically for us. If we can believe that we can go buy a bridal dress and it can be specific for us, then we can believe that God has a specific purpose for us. Now, if you don't know about this show, my name is Ketty and I have began Spiritual Glam inspired by God to teach the word to women to help them acknowledge their purpose and their presence in their home and wherever they go. Women nowadays, I understand that don't really give themselves the the priority or the purpose that they could be more than just where they are right now now there's callings on everybody's life and everyone needs to step into their purpose into their calling but i i know that there are specific things that only you can do in your family and in your part of the world that god put you there for so I believe that this is actually like a, a movement, a force, a propelling for your spirit to get activated and get on track. Now I have, well, inspired by God, I am going to read the Proverbs 31, The Excellent Woman. We're not going to go through all the verses, but a brief overview of The Excellent Woman is a woman that we can kind of look to as a role model. Nowadays, we can have role models all over the place, but those role models that you're looking at, they have flaws. Why do they have flaws? It's because they're human. So it's better if we're gonna be looking at somebody as an example, to look at somebody that has no flaws. So then we could aspire to reach that perfection because no human is perfect, no one and only God is perfect and his word is perfect. So if we can go to his word and look at perfection about a, what a woman it should be or is supposed to be, then even if we fall short, which we will, it doesn't really matter because we're not falling short to an imperfect person, but we're falling short to a perfect, a perfection, which means that we're actually aiming for that perfection, if you can kind of understand that. Before we begin, I would like to pray specifically for people that are in hospitals now with the virus and that have had lost loved ones for the virus because of the virus. And I would like to just tell everyone to hold on because Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming to the rescue. Whether you believe in God or you kind of don't know anything or you kind of do and you just don't want to tread on that spiritual path, God is talking to you. If you're watching this, God is talking to you. God wants you to know that he's coming for you. That you don't got to be afraid that he's coming for you. I feel that so, so deep in my heart that he's coming for us. He's coming for us. And he's coming for us during this time of the virus, but he's also coming to us. There's actually two kind of interpretations I wanna bring there. He's coming for us to help us, heal us, propel us, and make us stronger and more powerful here on earth with all that supernatural potential that's in us, but also he's coming for the church. He's coming for those that believe in him and to take them away before things get real messy down here. But 
we've spoken about that in episodes before so I don't want to get into too much of that if you want you can go ahead and listen to um, I think it's two episodes before this one not you can read in the description some revelation and let God speak to you don't even take my word for it just let God speak to your heart let him speak to your mind to your feelings to everything that has to do about you and he will but now let's join together in a prayer I understand that it's really important for us as a church to stand up in these times and face the music this is when we got to stand up not when everything is so going good and say yes 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 but when everything's bad still say yes 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 and yes by when I say yes I mean yes to God yes we trust you. yes we believe in you yes we won't fear no spirit of fear this is what I mean this is the yes that I'm talking about so let's pray Father Lord in the name of Jesus Father we declare Father Lord that you're a gracious God you're an awesome God you're a perfect God you do everything right on time Jesus you are never late you will never be late because our timing is not yours Father, look at the people in hospital beds, Father Lord. Look at the people that are sick now, at the doctors, at the healthcare workers. Father Lord, lift them all up in the name of Jesus. Heal everyone that needs to be healed and lift up everyone that needs to be lifted up. And in the name of Jesus, Father Lord, we declare healing over our land, healing over globally, Father Lord, because you are a God of righteousness, of perfection. You do justice, Father Lord. You save us, Father. Your mercy and grace will never be surpassed, Father Lord, because it's new every day, Father Lord. Your compassion for your people, Father Lord. You hear us when we cry out to you, Father Lord. Like when the Israelites cried out, Father Lord, you answered their prayer with Moses. Father Lord, may you answer your prayers, our prayers, with this vaccine, Father Lord or this supernatural healing, Father Lord, however you want to do it, Jesus. Have people begin to breathe again, pour breath into their lungs, Father Lord. Heal their lungs, Father Lord, for you have made each and every one of our bodies. Your, our DNA, Father Lord, was constructed by you, Jesus. You are the author, the beginning, the end, Father Lord. You know everything from past, present, and future, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, that you may lift up people, Father Lord that have passed because of this, that you may do inspiring and, and all breathtaking, stunning, amazing, supernatural signs and wonders for your, for your people, Father, because we ask for your presence, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Father Lord. You were, you were whipped for our transgressions, for our healing, Jehovah Rapha, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus that you would surprise, Father Lord, the enemy, Father, and just take it over, Father Lord. Take it over because when you have something in mind, you take it over. You do bigger and better, Father Lord, and that's what we're expecting. We're expecting praise, Father Lord, for all the amazing wonders and signs you will do in this time, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your healing, Jesus, because right now, Father Lord, your glory is extending through the global global father lord and you are working you are making the way and we will hear of your works in the name of jesus amen amen we will hear of the works of jesus of the supernatural in this time i believe it because god is supernatural and when we call on his when his people call on him he comes so if his people call on him and he comes and he does supernatural miracles and we are calling on him, then just now when it's super, it seems super impossible, this is the things that God steps into specifically. Not that he doesn't step into our prayers, but if he answers our detailed prayers, he will answer prayers that are coming around globally. He will manifest his supernatural power everywhere he goes. He's going to show up. He's going to show up and he's going to show the, not only the church, but the people who don't even acknowledge him. There will be many coming to him because of this, because of his healing, because of his supernatural presence encounter. And many will be saved. Many will be saved because God is good and he wants everybody to be saved and to come to recognition 
and he is Lord. So that being said, I have on my heart Proverbs 31. We are going to read 12 through 19. Let's begin. Proverbs 31, 12 to 19. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She chooses. The she we're speaking about is the, the wise, excellent woman. And she brings this to her husband. She brings him good, not harm, all of the days of her life. She chooses wool and flax. She loves to work with her hands. She is like the ships of traders. She brings her food from far away. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family. She also arrives, gives some to her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. She uses some of the money she earns to plant a vineyard. She gets ready to work hard. Her arms are strong. She sees that her trading earns a lot of money. Her lamp doesn't go out at night. With one hand, she holds the wool. With the other, she spins the thread. Now, this seems like this woman does everything, right? Like, it's just you think that if you put it in this context, it's like the woman of that day and age that didn't have a career or didn't have the children to raise in this time and age and, and this season in life in 2020 with all the YouTube and computers and everything that can distract the children. Well, in their times, they had advancements that were challenging as well she is like the ships of traders so she would actually be part of the trading in the in the in her part of land either she traded things that she bought linen things like that so she was wise even in investments she used her money she saved she saved money to help prosper her family she worked she woke up very early to feed her family, to be a giver, to be generous. So all these things are what God has for us as well. Now, this Proverbs 31 woman is like perfect, right? But as we were saying before, it's a good goal to aim at because God can help us reach these goals. Wherever we are weak in life, God can pick up that slack. And women especially if we're, we're gonna take the marriage into context right now women in marriage are very important because yes the man is the leader of the home but women inspire their husbands women kind of help in that guiding of what we should do and what we shouldn't do and women can also alert their husbands because not only are we smart but emotionally we have that connection where we can kind of tell if something's gonna go good or not I know all of us have been through that moment where we've actually said something to our spouse about something that they wanted to do that it was not correct or that they should not do it and then it actually turns out that we were right because God has given us that intuition not only to be you know con making sure that the household the children and everything in the household is going well but also in the marriage and a lot of times women who have a lot of success in careers they kind of put this on the back burner they kind of put the family on the side like it's not as a priority as the career or the marriage and women are called to just really be this heart of the home where everyone gathers because for example everyone gathers when someone cooks in the home and everybody sits together they're, they're gathered together. A woman can has those ability to gather people, gather family together. And I, I understand that a lot of women have, like, their, like what we were speaking about before, about their dresses, their bridal dresses, not fitting them or just really destroyed or, or beaten up. And it's because the enemy has tried to advance against the women in a particular way that is really detrimental. A lot of times in the marriage, in your life, you feel that you can't handle all those, those hats that, that you're supposed to carry. And that's not true, that is a lie. We can do it all, but it has to be with Christ because when we are weak, he is strong. And that's something that we have to understand. And I like the title where it says the excellent women. Women wanna be excellent. We like to have 
our home in order, our children listening or doing what they're supposed to do by disciplining them or help encouraging them in certain ways in school and behavior, our spouse as well. Sometimes we need to encourage them and be there for them and be that, that shoulder to cry on for them and, and just really help them speak their feelings and emotions because some some men don't most men don't like to even dabble in that area so I understand that the woman is so extremely important in the house that if the woman is out of balance and not in the correct position in her home then things in your home and in your family can go wayward they can go anyway you know if we look back at the title the excellent woman who can find an excellent woman in reality no one can we can't because that is a perfection but what we could do is aim for it and as we aim and we have that goal God inspires us and changes us and and molds us into this new woman that can be so effective and let, let me take a step back here just because I'm saying this it doesn't mean that I don't believe in that the man and the woman should have same responsibilities at home or with the children we're just talking about the woman role here we're not talking about the men's role which is really an important big huge role where spiritually men are supposed to lead and guide the home they are supposed to guide the woman and the children spiritually and if your husband or spouse you're if your husband because that's how it is to be married when you're with your husband is not doing what he needs to do it doesn't matter you do what you need to do and let God let make him do what he needs to do through our prayers, through our constant testimony, through our boundaries, through our acknowledging Lord, the Lord in our lives at all time. Remember by the verse in the Bible, as for my house, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So as we jump in here. I want to get back to where she gets ready to work hard her arms are strong we are strong and that's not only a call to be physically healthy like it also means to be strong with our body you know like working out and, and eating correctly feeding the pe our children correctly so it's just not for us to be healthy but if we're strong that means we're also feeding our, our family correctly our spouses correctly we're all involved we are completely involved in the everyday aspect of their lives so we're not absent just because we have career and success we are in every detail of what is going on in our family it's hard sometimes to have a career and come back at home and leave that career where it's supposed to be it is and if we continue on in the verses we can see that this wise woman this excellent woman has a lot of different characteristics it's like she does it all but remember that even if this is a kind of guideline to a perfection, we're not gonna reach it. We're not gonna always do everything correctly. And that's fine. That's fine because, like remember when we were talking about the, the bridal dress? That bridal dress is specifically tailored to us. That means that family, that husband, that child, that job, that career, that ministry, those friends those neighbors are specifically tailored to us specifically put where they need to be in this time in this season in this moment so that we can help them so we can do something about what's going on in this world because if you can't reach out to the world you could definitely reach into your home and I assure you that if you do your home correctly, it will definitely benefit the whole world. Now, there is all sorts of ministries and things that have been left behind because women or men have felt that they cannot do these things because they don't see the time for it. They, don't, they won't accept the challenge that God has brought onto them. And, and it's a lie from hell. 
Because you know what? That's fear. And God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. God gives us a God-controlled mind, a sound mind. A sound mind means a peaceful mind. That means we will be able to do more than what we can ever think or imagine if we put things in God's hands and we stop worrying. Because I understand that worry has taken up a lot of our time. And that's why we can't do the things effectively as we are supposed to do intentionally. We have to be intentional about the things we do and the reasons we do them so that we can get those intentional results that we are doing them for. We have to look, look how it says, she sees that her trading earns a lot of money. Her lamp doesn't go out at night. She sees it. So she, she acknowledges, she studies. So she studies on what's good for a marriage. She studies for what's good for her children, for her home, for her family, for the health, for their, for their doctors. She studies what is good for the home like we are supposed to do, even if we do have all these other things added to us by careers and helping our parents or doing whatever it is that we need to do, running or lifting up our small business or our huge business or a CEO or an actress or traveling, whatever it is, we are supposed to intentionally run the household. Be that heart in the household so that we can not only be successful in one area, but be successful in all the areas. And we can achieve that through prayer, through specifically letting God know what is exactly that's going on in our home. He knows what exactly is going on in our home anyway. But when we bring it to him in prayer, when we, when we tell him about what's going on, how it makes us feel, and how we see it's wrong, he stands with us. Because when you communicate to a friend a problem, that friend, if that friend is a good friend and a true friend, that friend will stick with you and actually help you. And that is a human friend, which is not perfect. Imagine God, who is perfect, Jesus Christ himself, standing with us to help us and give a specific strategy for that moment, that plan, that day, that we are supposed to exercise it and do what we need to do to accomplish and reach all that we need to accomplish. I think that's so good for this time because God is putting in us, in us women, strength, power, so that now when this quarantine is over, so that now when this time passes that things will be better we can have come out of this better this is not a time just to sit on the sofa and watch things on tv this is a time for spiritual growth where the whole world is actually called to step us take a step back and realize that we need god that we need more of him that the circumstances in our life are not going to change if we don't pour God into every circumstance. We kind of skimmed through Proverbs 31, which I challenge us to read it and kind of take in everything that it's talking to women about. It says, she watches over family matters. She is busy all the time. Now, that's kind of hard because we need to rest, but... Remember I was saying that this is an outline for perfection, something we will never reach to have everything in order or everything at the same time, but it is something to aim for, a goal, an idea that we should have in mind when we do things so we can be intentional to do things with perfection, with excellence for our family, for our spouses, for our careers or our family members and we should be able to do that. And I also like how she says she can laugh at the days that are coming because she is a woman that is prepared, a woman that that accepts challenges to be able to arise to different levels, to, to transform, to understand what God wants her to do. She speaks wisely. She, she's a person where people come and actually get counsel from her. And if we are going to aim for all these things we must ask god for help because in no way shape or form are we going to be able to achieve those things on our own this 
excellent woman is a woman that handles a lot of things at one time. She is multitask, like women, like we are. Be excellent and have a lot of hats. We're not just made to raise children. We're not just made to be wives. We are made to be women with ministries, women that push the envelope, that challenge the way women in general look at us so that we can be an example to so many women and young women out there that so deeply need it. God has laid this on my heart. Women that are with men because of provision. We don't need to do that. God made you smart. He made you excellent. He made you perfect. And then they put up with abuse whether it be physical, mental, verbally, or all of them, because they think that they can't survive or be as much or provide for their family or do as much as their spouse. That's a lie from the enemy and we rebuke him. You know why? Because women can do, as we see here, women are doing it all. We do it all. We could do it all, but these type of relationships that are kind of, that are abusive and they don't let the woman, the spouse does not let the woman flourish, stand out, stand up. Now I'm not saying here, everybody go ahead and get separated or divorced. I did not say that. What I am saying is take inventory of how your relationship is going or the ideas and strongholds you have let yourself create about your own identity so you can figure out the real one. The one that God has for you, not the one that people put on you. The one that God has for you and that he made you for. And I understand that a lot of women nowadays are just pretty much stagnant in that like they're stopped in time. Because they stayed home and raised the kids and they didn't do nothing after that. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you want to stay home and raise your kids and you are excited and happy about that, go for it. But... If you're not, or whatever, or if you're in a career and you wanna go home and stay with the kids, like I'm just saying that anything that you feel that desire for, obviously that is correct before the eyes of God, not going ahead and abandoning your family, but things that are excellent and wonderful for your family, why can't you do it? Who said? Who said? You know who said? You did. You told yourself because you believe the lies that the enemy was feeding you and it's time to get out of that slump because you have destiny to fulfill you have things inside of you that no other woman has and that we need nowadays women to stand up and be inspirational not half-naked women but women that respect and honor their bodies and look amazing while they do it because God made us like that and it's true when that inner beauty, like for, of course, outside beauty, take care of yourself, honor yourself, put your makeup on, do your hair, do your dye, do your nails. That's all fantastic. But if you're focusing more on the outer appearance instead of what's inside, instead of growing that spiritual strength of you inside, you're missing out on the best part because that spirituality of yours that becomes beautiful will blossom and make you look amazing without makeup. Make you look amazing at all times. When you wake up from your from your sleep, when you so when you're sick, anything because of your inside is going to flourish and shine on the outside. And that is true, ladies. Sometimes we're like, "Oh, that's a that's a bunch of like baloney or that's not true." No, it is true. When you look at a woman and you say she has something else and it's because of her inner beauty, it's not always because of her outer beauty. She may be beautiful on the outside, but the inner beauty shines brighter than the outer beauty. And that's something that we've spoken about before, about charm can fool you, beauty fades, but a woman who has respect for the Lord should be praised. And that also means a woman who respects the Lord, but a woman who respects herself meaning that a woman who respects herself doesn't let someone else disrespect her. 
matter know what. It doesn't matter who it is. Not a spouse. You're supposed to set boundaries, clear boundaries that people are not supposed to pass. Because God, we respect God. And if we're supposed to be imitators of Jesus, we have to, people respected Jesus. And we do too. We have to respect ourselves, our bodies, and not just let men or whatever do whatever you want or show it and flaunt it and we're supposed to honor ourselves and when we dress in a certain way it doesn't honor us it just makes men think that we're only available for that one thing and that's not going to trap them that's not going to give you an upper hand to be able to to get in a relationship with someone that you think you love it, that's not going to work it won't be a lasting because you're trying to persuade him with emptiness instead of persuade him with the fullness of your spirit with the fullness of who you are and no matter what man it is if they don't honor you for being a respectable woman then they're not worthy of your time because anyway down the road it would be chaos in your family in your marriage or in that relationship so Identify those alerts in your life now so that down the road you won't pay the consequence for just having people come to you or being attracted to you because you are dressing where everything is hanging out or showing areas that you don't need to show. Now I'm all for dressing nice and beautiful and looking sexy and, and sweet and, and you know fashionable I'm all for that but there is a way that God says we should do it so that we can represent him even in our clothing even in the way we speak in, in things that we do not just because the world is dressing a specific way of hanging of being dressed with their butt out or their stomach or their breasts or anything or everything all together do we have to do it now we can kind of wear the style but accommodate it to how God wants you to wear things and be respected you know God is coming for women he's coming for us in a spectacular way to realize who we are and whose we are so that we can just really do all that he's called us to do so that is the word for today. I am excited about the comments that I will be hearing and the things that I will be receiving on this specific word because I know that it came directly from God, God's heart for us. And when God speaks, we listen. His people listen because it even says it in the Bible that my sheep know my voice. And when I call, they answer they listen because we know his voice now if you're tuning in today and you have never received Christ in your heart we are going to go ahead and do a prayer for that then we'll go ahead and do another prayer specifically so that God can help us really acknowledge this guideline that he gives us in his word as something that we should aim for as an outline of how God wants to see that the goals in our life represent so let's pray so remember if you have never received Christ in your heart we're gonna right now do a prayer so that you can accept God in your heart and see the change and amazing things that he is going to do with you let's pray father thank you thank you thank you thank you for this word thank you Jesus because you are working thank you father Lord because you're amazing father look at whoever is joined today father lord that does not have your spirit in their heart repeat after me father i accept you in my heart i acknowledge my sinful ways and i repent i open my heart and accept that jesus christ died for my sins and came to save me not condemn me Father Lord, I renounce to everything that I did in the past. I renounce to the lifestyle that I had in the past. 
I even renounced to what I would wear in the past so that I may step in to this new life, this new creation that only your Holy Spirit can make happen. I thank you, Father, for eternity in heaven. Accept me as your child. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, if you've just done that prayer, that prayer was a prayer of salvation. So you can go ahead, start, begin to read the word, pray, ask God to motivate you, to show you, to guide you, and he will do it. Because now you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, which is going to tell you and guide you where you should go, what to do, what not to do. What are the great blessings of his life with you? And it's going to be extraordinary. Now join me in this prayer so that God can help you as well to look at this guideline of Proverbs 31 as the woman that is supposed to have that, that perfection, that guideline that we should all aim for. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you have done. I pray that everyone who's tuned in today under the sound of my voice, Father Lord, or they're tuned in at another point in time, that you, Father Lord, would help them see this outline, this skyline of the excellent woman, and that we can actually reach and that we would be able to cherish every goal that we meet, but that to know, Father Lord, that even though this is a goal for perfection, we could achieve it with you. Not complete perfection, but we could achieve our goals in our life and have them influence, be influenced by this outline. So Father, I pray that you would remove all desire that doesn't come from you and place this in our hearts as something to aim for, as an outline for our future, for our children, and for our marriages. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, thank you for joining me today on Spiritual Glam. Join me tomorrow to see uh, the next news break from heaven. So God bless.